I don't know if I should hug you or not. And so I was like, I'm not talking to the neighbors. I don't want to talk to anyone. What's up, y'all? And welcome back. So at the end of last month, that marked my first year of being a homeowner. I have survived my first year of home ownership. And I know that home ownership has kind of taken over my content within the last year, but that's basically because it has taken over my life but i did want to uh sit down and just go through a few things that i wish i would have known or things that i would have done differently as a first time homeowner because i know despite the rent versus own debates that go on and despite the housing markets and crazy interest rates despite inflation basically despite everything that's happening some people still have the dream of home ownership and no one can tell that person that they are right or wrong for wanting to be a homeowner so I just want to share this with you guys hopefully it will help you whenever you are searching for your first home so let's get into it first let me preface this by saying I honestly feel when it comes to buying a home, it's kind of like rolling dice. You don't know how your experience is going to be. And despite how many articles you read, how many video videos you watch, how many people you talk to, you're not going to be absolutely prepared for everything that comes with it. It's just one of those things. It's one of those experiences that you have to actually experience for yourself in order to get out there and learn. But the first thing that I wish that I would have known before I purchased the home or went searching for homes would be to understand the disclosure law in my state. Arkansas is one of the states that sellers you don't have to disclose things certain things about your home so if you had previous water damage maybe you had a fire flood whatever certain things don't have to be disclosed. Now through my research I did learn like um sellers their agents will have uh you know some type of disclosure form in which they will list out everything that they know about the property and i say that i wish i would have known this because a lot of the issues that I had with the home um, were a lot of the issues that the previous people were having with the home and nowhere in any of my documents I checked through all of my closing documents did it say that they had to disclose anything that they have known previously about the home and obviously you know that sucks not because I want to take legal action because that's just way out of my budget but because I feel like that would have helped to prepare me and that would have led me to look at certain things like if I would have known that the water heater burst right before I purchased a home I would have taken a second look at the water heater um, and I, I think that that would have helped me to uh, avoid a lot of the issues that I was having or at least I would go in there you know prepared or I would have had the ability to be like or had the option to be like you know I'm not really feeling that I'm not really comfortable if you know this house just recently flooded or because xyz um and then I would have been able to pull out so that's something that I definitely wish uh, I would have known going into it. The second thing I wish I would have done differently was to get help reading my home inspection report. Um, so whenever you and the seller are in agreement, you are going to have a home inspection. Uh, based on the type of loan, certain home inspections are required. So for my type of loan, which is a USDA loan, I had to have a satisfactory home and home inspection report certain transactions you can completely skip it why you want to skip it I don't know but for this one I was intentional about reading through the home inspection report so I didn't just kind of breeze through it and that was with any document that I signed I just wanted to be intentional about making sure that I was actually reading what I was putting my name on because this is a pretty big transaction this is probably one of the most expensive most expensive <coughs> this is probably one of the most expensive transactions uh that i will probably ever have in my lifetime and so definitely you want to make sure that you're reading everything that you're putting your name on but i will be honest um i did not really understand 
a lot of things in the home inspection report. Um, I was not really familiar with a hot water tank. I was not really familiar with anything that had to do with indoor outdoor units. So he did put down the things that would need to be looked at further. Things that were going to need to be replaced in the future. He did make me aware of that. Um, but obviously, as you guys know, those things that he said to get eventually looked at just went bam as soon as I got in the house. They needed to be looked at immediately. And I wish I would have had somebody in my camp, like a family member. I, I really wish that I would have had somebody sit down, someone who had experience with things that need to be kept up in the home. That way I would have been able to see like this is urgent, this is not urgent because I went off of... Uh, the inspector. I completely put my trust in the inspector and so if he said that the hot water tank needed to be looked at eventually you know uh, over the next few months I was like okay well I've got you know I've got a few months to get it looked at and I am not innocent either so I do know like certain things as soon as I got in the home I had to deal with the roof and then I had to deal with the AC unit and the house being so hot did take up a lot of my focus and so as the months rolled on something like the hot water tank uh, it did explode and I really wish that I would have gone back to the inspection report and looked through everything that I needed to eventually get looked at and get on that. So basically I was just so focused on the things that were needing to be replaced and or repaired in the present that I was not being proactive and thinking about oh shoot the other things that the inspector uh, recommended getting looked at eventually like the hot water tank and then that thing burst and so it wasn't until it was right there in my face and needing to be replaced that I got to it and uh, I know on one hand I was overwhelmed and had other things taking away my t attention but on the other hand um, I really should have gotten on that and I really should have had all of my ducks in a row but I didn't and kind of going back to my previous disclaimer you're not really going to know until you get in there and you start getting your feet wet um, how to really manage a home and I that brought me back to like my lender who was amazing because we were originally looking at duplexes or you know multi-family units and he recommended that I start with a single family home because number one I was being outbid like these investors were buying up these duplexes and triplexes and cash and here I am with an FHA loan like you know um I was put at the bottom of the list basically it is what it is and so he said we'll get it to a single family home and really learn what it takes to be a homeowner and when he first said that to me I was uh I was a little offended I was a little upset about it because I'm like what do you mean I've done my research I have looked into articles I know what I'm doing I know what it takes to be a homeowner I know the basics but going back to that conversation with him I thank God that I got into a single family home because I had no idea I thought I knew but I literally had no idea what it took to keep up a home I didn't know like certain like the AC unit had to be serviced every so often I didn't know that I did I didn't know how to handle claims I didn't know like uh, certain things I had to call in certain people like the termite people or the pest control I did not really think about that I did not think that through and if I had to manage multiple units at a time I think that I would have been extremely overwhelmed because I was so overwhelmed in a single family home that I forgot to get on a roll with the other things until they just blew up basically the third thing that I wish I would have done as a first time home buyer was to wait until I was less impatient, less impulsive, and to wait until I was uh, less fatigued, if that makes sense. And I say that because I had looked at so many units and I was being rejected for so many units talking about the multifamily units that when he decided my lender decided like you know your best bet may be a single family home just learn the ins and outs then after a year you know when you're ready to get back out there get back out there 
and so I was already very not defeated but like tired kind of fatigued I was tired of looking at properties I was tired of getting on Redfin I was tired of getting on Zillow and so when I switched to the single family search um I had a list of homes that I was looking at and this one popped up so when I came into this home it looked you could tell they just redid a few things um it looked perfect for me and my babies and so I was like let's put in an offer because basically I'm tired and I will also say that I was a bit impatient and impulsive as well because I lived in a little teeny tiny duplex it was very dark we did not get a lot of sunlight and it was affecting me mentally in a negative way to where I just felt like I had to get out I'm in a dark little cage I had to get out and anything was better than the area that I was in and so whenever I went up to this house and I checked it out I did go through the advice that I was seeing and I checked the neighborhood out at different times of the day so early in the morning in the afternoon at night I would just drive by and I would take a look around and I'm like daydreaming about it daydreaming about us being in a home getting out of the area that we were in and now it's so funny because it looked like rainbows and butterflies <laughs> back then just because it was a step up from where I was but I will say that um my vision was a bit blurry because I'm noticing certain things now that I did not pick up on before and I'm like girl how did you not see that how did you not see this even when it comes to outside of the neighborhood like things um, in the home like how did you not notice like there was water damage on th this bathroom vanity like it just looked brand spanking new to me like I missed a lot um, of details that if I would have had somebody like in my family come with me and look at it I know for certain they would have picked it up on it or at, at least my dad or my brother had them come with me um, but when it comes to the neighborhood the neighborhood that we are in it's kind of like a hidden subdivision in the back um, of a small town and it is a nice quiet neighborhood like it is I love it there's a lot of kids around here everyone does their best to try to keep up um, keep their their homes up and just keep the the little subdivision neighborhood up but I am not very happy with what what it looks like leading up to the subdivision and I know that that has probably a negative impact on our properties as well because girl where I came from was trash fill and I have to drive through trash fill I'm trying to be very delicate with my words I have to drive through trash fill to get to my home and I'm that person where my my environment is everything you know I'm not just inside my home but outside of my home I want to be inspired by what I am looking at and it just pisses me off and the more that I drive through this street to get to my home the more I'm noticing that this looks very similar to what I was so desperate to leave before it's just trashy uh just imagine a bunch of trash I still have cows on the side of me <laughs> there's still cows I have to drive by um I, and I, there was a goat that I drive I drove by today a freaking goat with a collar on so I drove by a goat today um but it's like the, the, I, I wasn't aware that the city did not have like a sanitation crew that came through to pick up um the trash that people that were driving through the street would throw out you you could put a, t a toilet out there and the toilet would stay there I looked at this I'm looking at the same pile of trash that I looked at for a, a whole entire year and I'm like Diana I really really wish that you would have taken your time and looked at everything in its entirety and made sure that it was something that you could really deal with and handle obviously I have to deal with and handle it now but once again going back to my environment I do not play I do not want to live in an area that has a bunch of trash everywhere I do not want to live in an area to where it literally looks like um, a junkyard outside of someone's home like they literally there's toilets outside there's 
tubs outside there's old junk cars outside there are empty trailers with glass everywhere uh it's just disgusting it's making it kind of hard for me to want to stay long term here just because i don't see it getting any better and I need something to be inspired by. I do love going to the city over across the bridge and I'm in a whole new city and they make sure they do not play when it comes to upkeep. They're going to keep their city in, in top notch condition. I just wish that I, I wouldn't have to drive through so much funk because it really does put me in a bad mood. It puts you in a bad mood when you look around and it's looking like you know what the heck is going on does no one have any pride in where you live so that is something that i really oh girl please do not look for a home or man do not look for a home when you're in a desperate state of mind because you're going to miss a lot of things both inside and outside of the home that are really on your non-negotiable list <laughs> The next thing that I wish I would have done was making a list of my wants and my non-negotiables and my H no's. And I say that because even when I was going and looking at homes, I did not know exactly what I wanted. I have some of the basics in mind, like it has to be a three bedroom home because I have two kids. Um, but as far as anything outside of that, outside of three bedrooms, two bathrooms, two full bathrooms. That was basically as far as my list went. And so it makes it, it's hard to narrow down exactly what it is that you want to be looking at whenever you don't know exactly what it is that you want. And so I, whenever it was in my price range, I would just go through it and, and see if I even wanted to view the property. But I think that I would have save myself a lot of time and save myself a lot of heartache if I would have known like the ins and outs of what I wanted. So as I am living in my home now, I really wish that I would have put on a list of having a backyard and a backyard that was like big enough for a trampoline or something. I did notice the backyard when I went to view this property, but once again, I am in a I'm desperate to get out where I am state of mind. And so the little patch of grass that we have in the back was good enough for it was good enough for me, right? And even something like the the bathrooms and in the closet space. I don't have a lot of clothes, so having a small closet doesn't bother me, but something like, you know, as the size of the bed bedrooms would have been a non-negotiable for me if I I would have known what I know now my kids rooms are very small it works for my six-year-old but eventually it's going to become a big problem for my 11 year old because she's when she graduates out of a twin bed which should be around now into a full there's really not much room in that room for a full like there's enough room in there for a full and a, a dresser that's going to be trapped right by the bed and that is it and I think that the living room is so big that I really wish that they would have made the living room a bit smaller to add more space to the rooms but that's something that I should have taken into consideration and I would have if I would have sat down and made a list and really thought through everything not just for me but for my kids as well the fifth thing that I wish I would have done differently as a first time homeowner would be to definitely talk to the neighbors. So I did see this tip and you know a few articles that I was reading where it's like it's really important to talk to the neighbors not just about you know what they know about your property but you know how the neighborhood is and have they had any break-ins or you know how the neighbors interact with one another I wish I would have done that and that was something that was in the back of my mind like girl you should get out and talk to the neighbors try to meet new people but I'm very introverted I'm very socially awkward I have met a lot of you guys like I think I met like six of y'all last year and you just came up to me and you're like yeah I, I watch your channel and you can see how socially awkward I am I don't know I do like the social this awkward smile and I don't know if I should hug you or not and so I was like I'm not talking to the neighbors I don't want to talk to anyone like I'm not talking to anyone because I don't even own this home this isn't even my home I'm just interested in it 
but had I have done that I would have learned about not only just my property but I would have known about the issues that the homes had that were in common so this subdivision it the homes were built mainly by one person um I learned that my home was one of the first homes on the street so it was not built by the people that came in to build out the rest of the subdivision um there's a gated community that someone um built behind our subdivision it's kind of like all together but I would have learned that the homes do have issues with staying cool in the summertime which was a problem I would have learned that the water heater was in the attic and people were having issues with the water heater bursting due to extreme you know temperatures that was a problem that I had um and maybe about plumbing as well I don't know I've noticed some plumbing issues but I'm sure if I would have talked to the neighbors about that they would have been able to uh, give me the the 411 on plumbing issues so especially my neighbor now she is very knowledgeable about what's going on um, and she's even offered to help me send over her person to um, put some pipe warmers on my hot water tank so it doesn't bust again in the winter but I could have saved myself a lot of money and a lot of headache if I would have just got out of my own way and made an effort to speak to the people around here because you can learn a lot from these people and not just the homes but how people interact with one another um the neighborhood facebook groups are another thing but that's just something that i wish i would have done but um in regards to like like everything i don't regret anything it's been a a year full of learning experiences and it will be for you like when you get in there girl you are going to learn and you can't kick yourself for anything that you did not do previously because just going forward like you're going to move a lot smarter you're going to move a lot better and I can't go back and change anything I can't go back and, and fix anything and do anything differently so what's the point you know of of sitting there and marinating on it but i really do hope that these tips do help you if you are going into the home buying process first congratulations to you and if you have recently closed on a home or you've recently purchased a home or if you've been a homeowner for a while let us know down below some things that would be helpful to first time home buyers or just people who are in the early years of owning a home I need the tips as well and I will catch you guys in the next one.